Hello everyone, thanks for watching WFB Plus. We're going to be talking about forecast track in particular with Francine and what expectations we could see if we see any more push towards the east, which appears to be a possibility that we could see this track continue to shift. We've seen that shift take place as the latest track, which came out at 10 o'clock this morning. So you'll notice it kind of puts Baton Rouge a little bit more on the western edge of the cone of uncertainty. And when the time we talk about tropical cyclones, we often talk about the eastern side of the storm having the worst weather. Well, this could be a little bit of a lopsided storm too because of dry air interaction as well as wind shear. So it could be a top heavy storm where we're going to see more of a north part of the storm being of the biggest impact. So that'll be something we'll be watching for. Now within this track, the National Hurricane Center says in between these two interval points within their forecast, there could be 95 mile per hour sustained winds, which would be what would be projected at landfall because this particular interval is actually at after it's made landfall and has started to weaken. So we're expecting landfall to take place sometime Wednesday afternoon, probably during the middle of the afternoon, but it's going to move through fairly quickly. So this is a 12 hour period. It's going to go from the Louisiana coast all the way to Jackson, Mississippi, and we're going to have southerly part of this circulation with probably very little impact. So we'll be improving weather conditions very rapidly overnight Wednesday and through the morning on Thursday. So let's talk about that track. Here's a look at Futurecast. We're going to start you out with two different models, the HRRR, which is more in line with what the National Hurricane Center has currently for a forecast track, although it is a little bit quicker than the National Hurricane Center. For today, we're going to see some of these outer rain bands, this clustering of rain kind of push its way through off and on throughout the afternoon and evening hours. Little to no impact expected with these rains as they make their way through. We're going to start to feel the impacts going into Wednesday morning. First off, along the coastal parishes and then starting to spread farther inland. Within these brain bands could be some isolated tornadoes. That's going to be impact number one. Some gusty winds, which could start to produce some sporadic power outages. That's going to be impact number two. And then some periods of heavy rainfall, which could flash flood some low-lying, poorly drained areas. That's going to be impact number three. Now, the main core of the circulation appears headed towards St. Mary Parish, which is pretty close to the inroad of where the National Hurricane Center believes the landfall could be. And here we are at noon, and we pretty much have a landfall almost occurring at that point. But you'll notice how a big core of the energy kind of works its way right on through Baton Rouge proper as we get towards Wednesday afternoon and Wednesday evening. Now, by the time we get towards Wednesday night and Thursday morning, things are already rapidly improving here. We'll still have some gusty winds still could see some down trees as we make our way through the evening and overnight which still could cause some additional power outages but weather are improving consistently as we work through the hours on Thursday. So here is the footprint of rainfall from the HRRR model. Again, keeping in mind with the track that would take it pretty much close, if not right on top of Baton Rouge. So you see where we have these heavier rainfall numbers close in line to where the center of circulation of this storm is going to be taking place. So you see these outlines here are purple, and we're talking about seven to eight plus inches of rain. Well, the vast majority within our viewing area, we're looking at anywhere from four, six, even maybe those seven inch rainfall totals. Now, let's talk about if it were to take more of a jog towards the east. That is illustrated by our graph model within our Futurecast umbrella. So here's a look at things as we work our way through today. Very similar, seeing some widespread rain, but majority really light to moderate in terms of intensity. Going into Wednesday morning, not as intense because the storm has jogged a little bit farther towards the south and east. So a little bit later in terms of the landfall projection, 4 o'clock because it's taking place farther towards the east. And notice how it's almost here towards the outer edge of Terrebonne Parish. So we're talking closer to Cocodry for a landfall sometime during the middle of the afternoon on Wednesday. Notice how we have more of our impacts here within the tighter core of the system in between Baton Rouge and New Orleans. So maybe getting an avoidance of some of the heavier rain and maybe some of the bigger significant impacts for the western half of our viewing area, but still portions of our viewing area are certainly gonna get hammered even if this part of the track plays out. But his subtle differences could mean all the difference in terms of how much, how widespread in terms of flood potential, 
how much and how widespread power outages could take place. Here we are at 7 o'clock in the evening, still quite a bit of heavy rainfall, strong wind kind of taking its place and wreaking havoc across New Orleans. Sections of St. John the Baptist Parish in the north shore of Lakes Pontchartrain and Maurepas, and then it continues to advance off towards the northeast. So keep in mind, the HRRR almost rode it right along I-55, uh, while the graph model has it riding right along I-59. So we've got a separation here with some of our short-range guidance as to exactly where the system is going to be headed. Here's the big difference. Look at these rainfall totals. If we can get a shift towards the east, we limit the overall flood threat for Metro Baton Rouge possibly significantly. So this is something we've got to keep a very close eye on is the center, the track that is going to take place. We may not get a good judge of that until it gets close to landfall, exactly where it could be heading and where it could be wobbling. So you see where those heavier rainfall totals of seven plus inches of rain really start to highlight themselves more in between Baton Rouge and New Orleans, including the north shore so western half of our viewing area could get by with minimal impacts if this track were to take place but a lot of uncertainty as to what track will take place at this time but if we were to see any movement or wobble it's more than likely going to be more of a wobble towards the east